Well, I haven't done a PowerPoint sermon in <laughs> a couple of years. Um, kind of feel like I'm back in the classroom. But uh, so y'all pray for me. Um, let's pray before we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for your word that you have given us that gives us the message of your covenant, what it really means, that we don't have to earn your love or your favor or forgiveness, that we don't have to earn anything from you, but you offer it to us as a free gift. You offer peace to everyone, even to those who are afar off, as your word says. We ask you to please forgive us for our sins and give us the Holy Spirit this morning in such an abundant measure that when we leave here, others will be able to say that we have been with Jesus. Bless your word today. May I not be seen. May Jesus and him crucified be the only object of, of affection, of focus. In your name, amen. So in the Bible, we find this. Um, the covenants. Now, what is covenant, a contract, compromise? What are some different kinds of covenants then? Marriage. Business. Um, I know with Rick being self-employed, there's often the uh, contract. That's a covenant. In the Bible of a covenant, um, we find it. Um, we've did his work, which he had done and he rested. Now, what does this word rested mean? Notice cease, rest, desist. Also, or when I was looking up this word the other night, this, this word for rest, it's not. Now, why would the Sabbath be a, a, a reason for celebration? Done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Sanctified. That's another interesting word. It means to honor. It means to hallow or consecrate or dedicate. To preach somewhere, usually it has something to do with a Sabbath school lesson. It happened when I was and so this is the Sabbath isn't the only topic of the message this morning, but it is a big part of it. And so what does the Sabbath lead us to? It leads us to proper rest. Talking about this, it wasn't necessary to have a command. And what was, I think you were the one who said the reason why, right? Do you remember what that reason was? It wasn't really a need for the command because it was kind of understood, I guess. God, well, you, you do typically young kids, they want to be like their parents. And so Adam and Eve, they were watching God and they he was showing them proper Sabbath keeping in the Garden of Eden. In a short time, they had been liberated from Egypt, and God took them to Mount Sinai. Even in that short time, there were multiple periods of rebellion and apostasy. And so when God was listing off the Ten Commandments, he gets to the fourth one, and he says, okay, all of humanity, almost all of humanity, is going to forget this.
remember, but it also means keep in remembrance. The Sabbath is not something that we are supposed to only think about on the Sabbath. Keep it in mind throughout the whole. To, 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 to make it fun. You know, when I was growing up, swimming on the Sabbath or not. There are people who have a problem with it. There are people who don't. And, and it's, you know, so you have to. The Sabbath, this word is interesting, too. It literally means intermission. Let's try it this way. Oh, what did I do? There we go. There we go. Now my clicker works. Well, we see two major covenants as being the old and the new covenant, but we also see several smaller covenants that God made with individuals. Um, what was God's part of the covenant? What was Israel's part? redemption in the Bible, right? Jesus said, I will put enmity between your seed. To, to fast forward to Genesis 22, verse 8, this is the story in, in Genesis where God came to Abraham and he says, okay, Abraham, now, what would be your first reaction to that? Abraham, I can imagine, was probably uh, like a, a come again. But he had that struggle, that mental struggle. He didn't know what was going on, but he knew God's voice. Now, when they got to the base of the mountain, he tells his servants, he says, you guys stay here. Isaac and I are going to go up. We're going to sacrifice. We're going to come back down. Now, that's a statement of faith. We are coming. And as they're walking up this mountain, they're hiking up. Abraham, or I'm sorry, Isaac's. And so I find Abraham's response fascinating. Abraham says, my son, God will provide. Like, God will provide the lamb. It's okay. But the way I, I read it a few years ago, and, and the way that it... See, Abraham had already understood the gospel by this point because God had taught, taught it to him. And and so, ever since scripture, the way it was translated, it says, "I have gotten a man from the Lord." But the way it's literally written in the Hebrew, "I have gotten a man, the Lord." Here now. genetic terminology. Uh, in this book, in, grain, in granite or ingrained, um, it's, a, it's a very good 
that are in all the covenants of the Bible, and we're going to go over a couple of them. The first marker is justification. And to reunite us with himself. The third one God will work through us to spread a knowledge specifically with Jesus. So here's an example. Covenant we're talking about here. And it says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And that putting enmity between you and your sin is a It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Creation right there. Because without the cross, we would have no hope of reconciliation with Jesus. To fast forward for the sake of time, towards the end of this, of this bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt. They didn't have to worry about all the hardships of work. Work was fun. Work was enjoyable. And it still should be. But now something else is. Now degraded. You've got to do something else to give you motive. Look, eventually, you're going to die. You're going to go back to dust. You are made out of dust. You're going to become dust again. And so, um, Adam was warning his, his, his children, his descendants, his posterity uh, of, of sin. He says, look, I know that. Now let's look at also the the, the sign. I'm not sure. We see justification and and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God, and you shall keep my statutes. And chapter so we're not going to go into that chapter but you read that chapter later and you see the mission five and verses five and six says now therefore and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation this is this is where Peter was quoting in First Peter. I think it's First Peter two nine, where God said, where Peter people, and that was their mission. This was the the mission that God had given Israel ever since He called Abraham. My job. Um, one of the things that stands out most about me is well, they'll ask me, what you got to eat today? I know there ain't no meat in there. And, and, and you know, one of the guys that I work with barbecue, man. And, and so... But you know what? The next time I talk to him, he says, I don't eat pork. N 
not eating any meat but fish. It, it, it's progress. It's mission. Well, if we read this text, um, the elders and worship afar off. Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh. words which the Lord hath said we will do. We will do. Their focus was wrong. We see it again a few verses later. Moses took half the blood and he took the book of the covenant, this is the handwriting of ordinances, and read in the audience of the people and they said Where was their focus? On themselves, on their ability. Now, if you try... ...the requirements of the Lord. We, we see it in the Bible. Paul, before he became Paul, he was Saul. He looked like he had it all together. But when God got a hold of him, he realized he was blacker than... Hebrews 8, if we go on, if we, if we read this, it says, Jesus obtained a better covenant, which is established upon what? Better promises. For if the first covenant had been... Them, he said... and with the house of Judah. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me. Shall know me. From the least to the greatest, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquity. Because God is going to live in me. See, because you in and of yourself, you have no power. You don't. His grace that each one of us are here today. It's only by his grace that we're seeking after him because of But God is merciful. God is patient. And because he loves us, he's given us grace. Now, you know, if we schedule the date, and um, she was asking me about <laughs> you're, you, you're right, you don't. But that's the beauty of grace. And I said, do you know what grace is? And she was merited favor that each and every one of us deserve, no matter if you grew up in the church or if you didn't. I grew up in this church, you know. Nothing but a toastier judgment for me if I don't repent. Because if we have the truth and we don't live it and we don't... As, as David said in Sabbath school, God would rather us be cold than lukewarm. You see, the whole point of the Bible is that God himself wants to write his law in each of our hearts and minds. See, many of us, we have...
the approximate distance between your brain and your heart. We can have the truth in our heads. In fact, that this was one of the fatal mistakes of the Jews as a nation. That, that knowing the truth, that saying, yep, that's true, was enough for salvation. Not realizing that, no, it's not. denominations. Yes, this is the remnant church. I believe this is God's last day people, but he's got people in other denominations that his spirituality far surpasses ours. I was preparing for this. I found this quote. I think it was last night, actually. Uh, it's from Signs of the Times, and it says, as the sinner drawn by the love of Christ approaches the cross and prostrates himself before it, there is a new creation. A new heart is given him. More to require. God himself is the justifier of him which believes in Jesus, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Great as is the shame and degradation through sin, Striving for conformity to the divine image, there is imparted an outlay of heavenly treasures, an excellency of power, and this is my favorite part, that will place them even higher than the angels. This a little more. There's another quote where the spirit of prophecy says that it was Satan's goal to bring about an eternal separation between us and Jesus. But because... Uh, not necessarily because we fell, but because Jesus came to redeem us. Because of his death on the cross, we're going to become closer to him than if we had never fallen. You see, she also says that before the fall, it would have been humiliating, infinite humiliating, for Jesus to become a human. If it was just one person, if it was just Jessica, if it was just Nerlin, if it was just any one of us, he still would have done it. You see, essentially, just a historical thing, it's also an experience thing. The book that I mentioned earlier, um, In Granite or Ingrained by Skip McCarty, it's historical, it's experiential. Are, are we to that point where we finally learned that we cannot make ourselves good, or are we still trying? Many of us are tired. We come We're still living under the old covenant. But God wants to take us from there to the new covenant. And what is the new covenant? Well... Three fifteen. Remember, we, we read this a little bit ago, but let's read it again. Jesus says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, and it will bruise or, or crush, it means. It will crush thy head, and thou shalt bruise or crush his heel. And as this word head to be very interesting. As you know, um, I, I love studying the original language. Jesus will crush the serpent's head. Now look what this word means. It means head. It's not enough for Satan himself to be destroyed. All of, not just Satan, but all of his angels, all those demons that rebelled, they'll be destroyed. Not just them, but sin and disease, and sickness, and sorrow, all of that will be thrown. Behold, I make all things new. And that doesn't just apply to heaven, that also applies to our hearts. Adam and Eve. What did they do when they first realized they were naked? What did they use? Fig leaves a symbol of their own works of righteousness. And when God came to them, he said, that's not going to work. 
if you want to be redeemed, you've got to do it my way because it's the only way that will work. It's not that God was being a control freak. That's not God. It's that God is saying there's only one. Jesus would die, but only temporarily. Satan will also die, but he will die permanently. Perish. Because think about it. We all still struggle with sin, or we wouldn't be here. Some more than others. of sin and of Satan. And one of the things that I was reading recently that broke Adam's heart was the fact that he was trying to warn his kids and his grandkids and, and all his posterity, and they threw it back. But he kept warning them anyway because he wanted them to be saved. Now let's look in the New Testament for these, these uh, DNA markers. And number one is justification, Romans 3. 24 to 25 says that we are justified freely by his grace. Sorry. <laughs> Technical difficulties. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. The next one we see is reconciliation. God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus and has given us that same ministry of reconciliation. Remember, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not in to try and reconcile others. Moving on to sanctification, Jesus is made unto us wisdom and right. When Jesus resurrected and before he left to go back to heaven, what did he tell us? Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And You see, it, 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 and it's not until we have that experience with Jesus. Because you can preach the gospel. You can preach an evangelistic series. But if you're not living it, people are going to know. You see... Hebrews deals quite a bit with the covenants. Hebrews 4 tells us in the biblical definition of the term. We talked a little bit about this in Sabbath school. What does rest mean to you? Over here. Restoration. You see, when we accept Jesus, that's when we feel peace. I'm sorry, Steve, did you have an answer? When the disciples were on the Sea of Galilee, this happened twice, remember, um, the storms. They thought they were going to die. And who gave them? In fact, one of those, it, it absolutely fascinates me the way the story is written in the Greek. Um, I can and he would meet them later. Anyway, they encounter this storm. And and that they wouldn't, it, he wouldn't let them crown him king. And so God allowed the storm to happen to distract them from their complaint. Um, and so they're freaking out. I mean, if, if you 
or let's walking in the in a pitch black house and it's storming outside and you see a glowing figure well, what's going to be your first reaction <laughs> i'm calling the pastor come over and pray um so they're they're freaking out but jesus response is what don't be afraid it's me but that's not how it's written in the greek he says be not afraid i am that's how it's literally written in the greek He's saying, look, I, this storm has not got nothing on you. I control this storm. I am. I am God. I am your peace. I am your sanctification. He said, it's okay, guys. And when he calmed the storm, they were in awe. So covenant rest. It's unconditional and implicit faith and trust in God and his word, specifically the promises. Hebrews 3 tells us that take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Here, what, is he, what story is he referring to? The, this is the experience of Israel, the first. At the insistence of the people, God says, oh, fine, Moses, you can send in 12 spies, one from each tribe. And 10 of them says, nope, can't do it. And two said yes. Those 10 could not enter the promised land, but those two did 40 years later. That our church, God wanted to... You see, Hebrews 11 goes on to say, without faith, it is impossible to please God. I say that to scare people, but it's just a biblical fact. We've got to have faith. And if you don't have faith and you feel like you can't cultivate it, then ask. Sense of God's presence. So, in encouraging God was saying those those all those tribes without God's help they would have beat made it in in Deuteronomy we see let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him for he shields him all day long and the one the Lord loves things to do to run and the lord is he's giving us this picture he says look i will carry you you can god's presence Jesus said in Matthew 11, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? You shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now the, the yoke was... ...each other and also with him. Because when the church learns to move as one unit, it tells us that only when God's image is perfectly reproduced in his people, only then will Jesus. We see again in John 15, um, And read in the beginning of John 15. Uh, this is right after the Last Supper. Saying to them be right, right before this, if you if you open your scriptures to John 1, you'll see. Now 
even close. They were still fighting about who was going to be the greatest because they didn't get it yet. It took an I and you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more. The same brings forth much fruit, for without me, you can do nothing. Relationship in Jesus. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here because the positions in the church, it doesn't mean anything if you don't have Jesus. So, cover. fruit of righteousness, of obedience, by what? Abiding in Christ. Abiding in Christ will lead us to the Holy Spirit. Covenant promises. Have you ever... And you struggle, and you struggle some more, and then you struggle some more after that. And I know I'm not the thing happens, and it's gone. You, you sometimes I had this. something, a study that somebody posted online, and it completely changed my point of view. And, and it's just like that. It, we, we, we have two kind of poles in, 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 in theology, in, in Christian living, and in, in Uh, and in the world church I'm referring to, and and in this this kind of polar opposite deal, we have in one camp. I've got to cooperate with God. I've got to I've got to obey. And but on the other side, we have the other pole of cheap grace. Well, it doesn't matter what I do. God still loves me. He's not going to stop loving them. But we, we, and, and what tends to happen is we meet somebody from this camp or, or, or from this camp, and, and, and they kind of rub us the You know, um, and, and, and what we've got to do is we've got to find that balance of what the Bible is. That power. Jesus. No other source. Jesus. You know, there's a phrase that I've heard. I would add to that our choice as well. Um, because then buckle up because things happen. You know, one thing I've noticed this year I noticed that earlier this year. I noticed it last week. Yeah. Um, I want to get to a scripture. Before. 
It says, will you not without delay place yourself in right relation to God? Will you not say, on the Lord's side, disregard custom and the strong clamoring of Say, I will believe, I do believe that God is my helper, and you will find that you are triumphant in Christ. It doesn't say, do this work of penance, and then you'll find victory. It says, I will believe in God, and then you'll find victory. By steadfastly keeping the will on the Lord's side, every emotion will be brought into captivity to the will of Jesus. Are your emotions messed up? Can you control them? But you can give your will to Jesus, and as a result, your whole nature will be brought under his control. It will take, at times, every particle of willpower that you possess, but it is God that is working for you, and you will come forth from the molding process, a vessel unto honor. The Bible tells us that we can do all things through Jesus. It's him who, who brings us the ability to obey him. So, in Isaiah 30, verse 15, this is the NIV, it says, this is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says. In repentance and what? Rest is your salvation. You know, um, one of the illustrations the Spirit of Prophecy brings up is that can a plant cause itself to grow? No. Can you cause yourself to grow? No. It's only by what? How does a plant grow? By the sunlight, by water. Maybe by giving it extra plant nutrients, but is the plant giving himself those things, or is it somebody else? It's someone else. So how do you grow? Relying in Jesus, abiding in him. And this is kind of the verse I was mentioning. This is what kind of changed my whole perspective on, on, on some things, at least. And it says, I create the fruit of the lips. This is Isaiah 57, verse 19. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him who is afar off and to him who is near, says the Lord, and I will heal him. There, there is a, a preacher that I follow on social media, a Seventh-day Adventist preacher in California, and he is a, a very godly man. I believe his name is Anil Kanda. And you can find him on Audioverse and YouTube and, and social media. And um, he, he posted this thing with this verse. He says, look, you don't have to be perfect to accept the peace that Jesus offers. You don't even have to be close to him yet. You just have to want him. You've got to have that desire. But even that desire comes from Jesus himself because, again, the shepherd initiated the search, not the sheep. So if you have that desire in your heart to follow Jesus, that's Jesus already working on you. And he says, I want to give you what? Peace. Ezekiel... Um, I put my phone up here to not distract me, but there's a um, a scripture that I want to show you that I forgot to put in here. So I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will... will cause you to walk in my statutes. Who's doing the work here? It's God. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. The, the obedience comes as a result of God living in you. God living in you doesn't... But this is what I wanted to share with you. You feel that sin has separated you from God, that you are in bondage to the power of evil. The more you struggle to escape, the more you... Re You see that your life has been filled with selfishness and sin. You long to be forgiven, to be cleansed, to be... It is peace that you need. Heaven's forgiveness and peace and... You can never hope by your own efforts to secure it. But God offers it to you as a gift without money, and without price. It is yours if you will but reach out your hand and grasp it. This 
of Jesus making me holy is, is my only hope. Because I look at myself and I see no possible way that I can be saved. It's only when I look to Jesus that I have that. if you've noticed, but we're in the end times. And, and, and I, I don't have to be perfect to accept his peace. And, and it kind of shattered that fear and, and that depression. Now, I, don't get me wrong, I still struggle with those things at times. But not near to the extent as before. Because the Bible says, peace to him that is afar off and to him who is near. It also says in Hosea, um, I taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by their arms, but they did not know that I had healed them. This is probably something that you're going to hear me talk about it again and again whenever I get the chance to speak here, is that God has already secured healing for us. We don't have to struggle with those things, whatever they are for you. And trust me, I was that Christian who I had the blackest sins, but I looked holy to others. I used to struggle with certain things in the past. Notice I said in the past. You know, I was that Adventist who went to church, but I would dabble with alcohol. I would look at dirty websites. I, I was that Christian, that Adventist who would go to church and I would go to Applebee's and get pork chops. If God can change a lukewarm Seventh-day Adventist life, to so many people being saved in the latter rain, because Revelation 12, I think it's verse 11, says they overcame him by what? The blood of the Lamb and... and preach for hours. I'm not going to. <laughs> but I can stand up here and preach for hours. I know it's getting late. My 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 <laughs> I've never felt so accountable. It's telling me how long I've been going to. <laughs> um <laughs> people more than this will. And by the way, I, I am so proud of this young man. He, he is like a son to me. I love this kid. And um, so when we understand this, and not until we understand this, that's when the end comes. And you know what? The fact that all these things are happening in the world, it really shouldn't scare us. If anything, we should be celebrating because you know what that means? God's people are getting it together. They can't do it. That, we see these rumblings come. I, I, I think... I'll close with this illustration, I promise. Um, <laughs> promise. Um, I think this is another illustration from Pastor Ernesto from a sermon he did a while ago. And that is that I think this was during quarantine when we, when we had to stay home and we couldn't come back to church yet. And he says, what is it that produces the birth of a baby? Do you remember what he said? Do you remember that sermon? time is done to, 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 to use a cooking illustration it's done baking the baby is ready to be born is ready to survive outside of the womb without umbilical that without the umbilical cord it's not the contractions the contractions let us know that it's near but it's not the contract that bring Jesus back they let us know he's coming back soon, 
but it's the fact that his people are ready. We're not ready yet, but we're almost there.